Call to order the September 20th regular Board of Ed meeting. Please rise and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I believe we have Sarah Valla here to represent the student high school with an update and a report. I only wish everyone was there at opening day to hear your incredible speech. <laughs> thank you, thank you, appreciate that. All right, good evening everyone. So, um, I'd like to begin with the student life section of our report. So we began the school year with our freshman orientation in which our wonderful peer leaders welcomed the incoming class of 2026. And shortly following our first few days back, our club meetings began once again with each club having their own first meetings and they're, they recruited new members through our club fair, which occurred just yesterday. And students were able to create posters and flyers demonstrating what their club was about, and I believe it was a great success. Uh, shifting back into a broader view of the month, September 15th marked off the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month. So signs were put up around the building to highlight important Latino artists, scientists, writers, athletes, etc. Along with that, we were greeted Thursday morning by our world language and history teachers who demonstrated Latin, uh, Latin and Spanish dance and music. <clears throat> Moving on to the theatrical part of our school, Fall Drama had their auditions this past few days and they just released their cast list for their upcoming play, Night of the Living Dead, which will go on stage in December. And just today was um, National Voter Registration Day and to encourage students to register to vote, the League of Women Voters were here today during lunch to do just that, aiding our 16, 17, and 18 year olds in their voter registration. Now moving on to athletics, from, from student life we move to fall sports, which has been up and running for quite a while now with great success. Our many wonderful teams, including varsity football, girls and boys soccer, swimming, and many others have been reigning supreme left and right. We hope to finish the season strong. And honing in to our cross-country division, we hosted our event, Big Red, for 50 schools and approximately 1,500 runners from all across. And it was also a great success. And of course, sports is not all about the number of wins you receive. It's also, sometimes it can be about the meaning of the game as well. And so the girls volleyball team showed us this by hosting a game in honor of the late Mrs. Kamara, who passed away last year. And of course, our teams could not function without the amazing leadership of our team captains. For that reason, we welcomed Major Bob Ryan from West Point, who met with all the fall team captains for a leadership and team building session. <clears throat> Moving on to counseling. Our class of 2023, me included, <laughs> have now entered the season of college applications. Our counseling department has been hard at work providing resources and opportunities for students to seek aid in any and all parts of the application process. We had a few workshops dedicated to navigating the Common App. We've also had members of the counseling department visit senior English classes, providing them with a model month-to-month -month itinerary, as well as information on our school's policies, such as weighted GPAs, class ranking, etc. cetera. Um, from there, students were reminded to set up their senior meetings with their guidance counselors to do a more specific overview of what their timeline would look like. And along those lines, just last night, we had our senior college night designed to answer any questions from students and their parents slash guardians regarding the application process. And finally, last week, we began hosting our college representative meetings in which students may sign up on Naviance to meet with a representative for a school that they are interested in. It's a great way for students to gain further insight into the school and demonstrate their interest if a college tracks that. And our final segment of the night pertains to student council activities. So the executive board, we had our first summer meeting, August 29th, and which we reviewed our agenda for the rest of the year and introduced the new executive board. Uh, within, within senior class board, they started off the year strong with the fan favorite senior parking spot painting, which occurred just the week before, continuing into Monday and Tuesday, just a little bit. And then, um, once school started, September 2nd was the Senior Sunrise and Subsequent Breakfast, which was sponsored by the PTA. And Senior Apparel was just distributed last Thursday and Friday. 
Uh, moving back into the executive board, the fall season is typically a time where we're most busiest and we're planning for a lot of activities, spirit, mainly for Spirit Week and the homecoming game, as well as pep rally. And so with that, we are excited to announce two revival events, first of which is going to be our bonfire celebration. We'll be hosting that October 11th from 6 to 8 to usher in our spirit week for everybody. And it's going to be limited to just Somers High School students for this year. And uh, second, we have our homecoming dance. The theme we have chosen is the Enchanted Forest. It will be hosted on October 15th from 7 to 10.30. And it will be in the lower gym and comments. We are going to be working through those details in the following weeks. And we hope it'll be a good success. And that's about it for tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Sarah. I hear there was some dancing at the high school recently. Is that yeah, right? Mr. Bear was. Uh, did you see the video? Yeah. No, did we get <laughs> the video? It's on the Somer Central School District Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Sarah. Excellent. So, thank you. I think we now move on to public comment. Um, if there are any members of the public who wish to make a comment about items that exist on our uh, central office report, board discussion, or board action, uh, please go ahead and go to the podium now. You have a minimum of three minutes per speaker, uh, 30 minutes total. I'm not sure if we have any folks that would like to make a public comment, but please do so now. Okay. Looks like we are moving right along to our central office report, which begins with the DEI seat review and update. Good evening. Um, so for well over a decade, so Somers Central School District has been committed to engaging students at a personal level so that they can find success in a global society. Also valuing diversity, equity, and inclusion in education. These have been stated parts of our mission, vision, and collective commitments in the Somers Central School District for several years. As part of this work, we all share a commitment to ensure that all students have equitable access to rigorous curriculum in a welcoming and affirming environment with educators who are reflective and responsive to student needs. Some examples of this work to remind uh, the board and the community are increasing access for all students to engage in higher level courses ongoing throughout um, the district. Also responsive classroom practices that help create safe, joyful, and engaging learning environments at the elementary level. Professional learning for all faculty and staff with a focus on engagement, responsive teaching, and inclusive practices. And uh, since 2016, each of our four buildings have been designated no, a no place for hate by the Anti-Defamation League, um, which means that they engage in school-wide activities uh, geared towards decreasing bias-based behavior, proactively decreasing bias-based bias behavior in our schools. Also since 2016, the Somers Central School District Educational Equity Advisory Team has, has been uh, meeting. This committee is comprised of administrators, teachers, staff members, students, parents, and community members, and meets several times a year to ensure stakeholder voices are included in the district's goals related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. For the past several years, this work has been coordinated at the district level by our DEI leader. And last year, we were in the position to welcome a new member to, that, to our team in that position. After several rounds of interviews that included administrators, students, parents, faculty, staff, and staff members, um, and student focus groups, one candidate distinguished herself as the finalist for this position. And tonight, we want to welcome Susan Gonzowitz to the team and invite her to um, share her highlights of her detailed plan for uh, and supporting DEI work in the district. So a brief introduction of Susan. Um, Susan <laughs> is also an adjunct lecturer at CUNY Hunter College School of Education, teaching graduate level courses in foundational literacy, school supervision, and diversity in American schools. Susan is a seasoned researcher and writer and has presented her work at the American Association College for Teachers, American Educational Research Association, National Center for Teaching, residencies in New York Association for, of Colleges for Teacher Education, teaching works, and a host of other workshops and conferences. 
Before joining SOMERS, uh, Susan spent a decade in the East Harlem Tutorial Program. She was a racial equity consultant and the founding managing director of the East Harlem Teaching Residency. She also spent seven years in New York as an instructional coach and elementary school teacher. Susan is, cr Susan is currently a doctor of education uh, in educational leadership, administration, and policy at Fordham University, received her master's degree in literacy and, advan and an advanced certification in school supervision and administration at Hunter College, and her undergraduate degree in elementary education and teaching from Skidmore College. Susan has several New York State certifications, including school building and district leader, elementary education for grades one through six, literacy for birth through sixth grade. Um, and again, I want to uh, please join me in welcoming Susan so she can highlight and uh, share with us parts of her entry plan. Um, that's me. Uh, <laughs> hi. Um, so uh, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, I am really excited to be here and appreciate the opportunity that you all have given me to join the SOMERS team. I, uh, I grew up in Westchester. I'm a Westchester mom, so this, this really feels like a homecoming. I am much shorter than you, Claire. There we go. Uh, so this, this really feels like a homecoming for me in a lot of ways, and I'm, I'm really excited to be here um, and have an opportunity to just get to know what makes this community as wonderful as it is. I haven't been here long, but in the three weeks I've been here, everyone has been so gracious and welcoming. And the trend that I see is that everyone centers young people in all of their conversations. So there is not a administrator, a teacher, a leader, a parent who I have sat down with who has not talked about how to do right by kids. And that's, that's such a wonderful foundation for DEI work. Um, and so I just want to talk to you a little bit about how we're going to figure out, you know, the, what we're going to do together um, as, as we define DEI work, what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like. So um, SOMERS has, has goals of supporting our young people to, to be citizens in a global society. And, you know, in order to do that, we have to continue to make sure that we are building spaces in which our young people both feel as if they are welcomed and affirmed and spaces where they help create an environment that is welcoming and affirming. And I think that's what DEI work is all about. And SOMERS already does so much wonderful work in that area. And so how do we leverage what is best about what we do to continue to reach those goals of creating the most welcoming and affirming environment we can for all young people? And uh, I'm gonna start that work. Uh, I sort of have three phases of, of what I'm thinking what I'm thinking as my entry plan. So the first phase is, is getting to know the community. It's getting to know uh, what DEI means to each of the stakeholders, what people love and want to hold on to with our work, what people want to leverage and continue to do. So I'm going to meet with and have begun to meet with administrators at the district and school-based levels, meeting with teams who service our English as new language students, um, special education teachers who, who work with students who have IEPs, um, meet with any teacher who wants to have a conversation, and, and to talk to some young people about, about really what their experiences have been. I, I got to meet some amazing young people during my interview, and, and they had fabulous things to say and things that they, they want to see more of, and, and so I'm hoping to meet with more and more young people. And as I do that work, I will um, start to understand uh, you know, what what it is we want to accomplish, right? And we will set goals together. So I, we don't have DEI goals yet. We have a plan for how we will go about forming those goals because it is really a collaborative process. Um, and then we'll start to think about what do we do best that we can leverage as we move forward? What, what will success look like a year from now, five years from now? What is our strategic plan? And how will we measure that success? Uh, and then we will do a lot of communicating, a lot of cycles of feedback. We will continue to use the surveys that the district already has. Uh, we will run focus groups with kids as they, as they want to be a part of it um, and really make sure that we have a process for setting goals, gathering feedback on how well we're doing on those goals and moving forward based on that feedback. So that's a very big picture of kind of how we will start the work. Um, and it's all sort of laid out there with some of the core questions that we want to ask as we as we move forward. Oh, next slide. Right. Oh, right. 
And part of that is that we really would love for the community in all, all stakeholders, right? So whether you are a parent or a young person um, or someone who lives in the community and cares deeply about this work uh, to get involved. So we would love to have you join SEAT. The dates are on the board, which I am having trouble seeing, but the first one is October 18th. Um, there's a, you can scan that um, QR code and it's a form so that you can apply and get all the information. And uh, you can also email me at sgonzowitz at somerschools.org if you wanna talk more about it. Um, I would love to, to get to know anyone who wants to get to know me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Susan. Absolutely. Welcome. 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 Thank you. Welcome. Susan, I have a quick question. Absolutely. If there are kiddos at the school who want to be involved, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, so if they're in the high school, <coughs> there should be tons of flyers and information. They can talk to um, Ms. Bengosh. Thank gosh, right, about joining. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure there wasn't an I at the end of it. About joining, um, she has the code, or they can email me and I can send it to them. Um, and we would love to have kids involved. Um, so absolutely send them my way. Thank you. Yeah. And then I think we're going to go to the next beef from the learning office on professional learning. Oh, there's more. from up here. If that's yeah, that's good. Yeah, there's a spot right here for you. That's good. Not often I have to raise the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi, everybody. It's nice to see you again. Uh, Claire and I are here tonight uh, to provide the board with a lens into the professional learning that's happened in the district since we were last here. Uh, it was about this time last year talking about some of the great work um, that happened over the summer um, with all of our uh, stakeholder groups related to learning. Oh, I have to advance the slides. Um, if you recall, the last time, uh, for the last three, three years, two or three years, Claire, had, Claire and I have been um, f thinking deeply about how to drive the culture of Somers in terms, uh, towards the priorities that are on the board related to professional learning. Specifically, we've been thinking very carefully about how to increase teacher voice choice and agency in the content and the form of our professional learning opportunities that we afford um, all of the folks in our organization. Our, goal are all, our goals are always to provide learning opportunities for everyone that are practical, that are aligned to the expressed needs of all the constituent groups in our organization, that are focused on increasing student engagement, that are aligned to the district mission, vision, and values, and that are supportive of the achievement of the SMART goals that are um, set forward by each of the school buildings in our district. We've been fortunate in some ways over the last, three year, last few years um, during COVID um, to have been forced to think differently about professional learning and some of the things that you'll see tonight are a consequence of the learning that we had as an organization during the COVID pandemic and we've, we've maintained some of the things that have demonstrated to be effective in that. For this year's conversation with the board, we did add this uh, graphic here specifically to illuminate the, uh, the ways in which we've engaged different stakeholder groups in the organization. Um, it's through, uh, frankly, through the support of the board, um, helping, helping us to be able to engage more meaningfully with our teaching assistants as well. Um, so that column there is an important one to highlight, and that's the second column uh, of this chart. Um, we, we are very proud to say that our teaching assistants have been able to partner more with their classroom teachers in each of the different <coughs> learning experiences that are highlighted here on this, uh, on this chart. We also want to draw a specific attention to um, and, and I'll highlight this towards the end of the presentation as well as to how parents can get involved as well and how we're engaging with our, our students. And so um, for the next few minutes, we'll go through each of the different areas of uh, engagement and how we've engaged our stakeholders, starting with our leadership summit um, uh, and, and uh, work, working through curriculum work, our Tusker University, which is the brand that we've used to define all the different engagement opportunities we have for different stakeholder groups. So you'll see Tusker University faculty focus, a Tusker University student focus, um, as well as a Tusker University family focus. And sprinkled in the middle there, we'll discuss and give you some tangible examples of uh, in-service groups that we've also uh, been supporting in our schools that are aligned, again, to that mission, vision, value, and are supportive of the SMART goals in our district. 
Claire, do you want to talk a little bit about the uh, Summer Leadership Summit? So before school starts every year, all members of the faculty who are in formal leadership positions come together for a leadership summit in which we all engage in learning together and work on developing our leadership capacity. And we also collaboratively set goals that are aligned to the Somers Central School District success plan. Uh, the instructional plan for this for this day for these two days are, are modeling the instructional uh, practices of engaging learning environments and classrooms that we hope that all of our students experience in Somers uh, K-12 as well. Um, and our goal every year is to leverage and be responsive to the feedback that we receive from all of the participants. Um, some of those examples are uh, from feedback from from past years or a desire to engage in. Um, vertical alignment teams, um, so K-12 alignment teams in curricular and special areas, and those meetings have been going on and are continuing this year. Um, also, feedback includes things like we need a longer lunch period because we had a packed schedule and shortened it a little bit and it wasn't appreciated, so we, we hear that <laughs> and we'll certainly make changes to our plans for next year. Uh, a very, uh, this year, again, was a very successful um, leadership summit. Our goals are, are clearly stated. Um, in our in our presentation here tonight and 82 participants came together for a full day of work and collaboration and their feedback that can is linked at the bottom for anyone at home who wants to read specifics um, show that it that uh, it was appreciated and we continue to um, be responsive and and and, and engage our, our leaders with ourselves in learning and, and leadership capacity growing um, so it was a great success and that's one of the opportunities that we um, engage in here under the umbrella of professional learning. Uh, the next piece of professional learning that goes on during the summertime uh, is summer curriculum work. Uh, summer curriculum work, um, every year mem faculty members are encouraged to submit proposals for summer curriculum work. And this is really work that falls outside of the realm of the uh, reflective curriculum development that every professional educator engages in on a regular basis. Uh, teachers work in teams over the summer to align curriculum to new standards that have been set forth by the state to integrate new tools or resources into existing curriculum or to align curriculum to new methods or structures that exist. So for example, uh, science teams work this summer to align to the, to the next-gen science standards. The world language team uh, came together with general education teachers over the summer to work on the world language uh, curriculum at the elementary level, which is a new curriculum and a new experience at that level. Middle school teachers, many engaged in, in curriculum writing uh, for either enrichment or uh, support curriculum for wi the new win period structure here at the middle school, the what I need period that's been integrated into the Somers Middle School structure scheduled throughout the day. Um, another example is a chemistry team coming together to work on embedding honors into the chemistry classes at the high school, which is new this year. Um, so these are just some examples of the 91 proposals we received um, and were approved for summer curriculum work this, this past summer, um, in which many of our um, faculty engaged in that work. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm trying to, I can't see up there, so I'm trying to find the exact <laughs> number. Um, the 85 percent? 85 percent of the faculty engaged in, in some aspect of summer curriculum work this summer. Um, and so we are very grateful to those faculty members for their dedication and their hard work over this summer and for the district and the board for supporting that work. The next piece of summer learning we wanted, or of sorry, of professional learning we wanted to discuss is the Tuskegee University faculty focus um, structure that we put in place. This is the third uh, year that we've had the Tuskegee University faculty focus model in place in Somers. This was something, as I mentioned before, that that started during COVID, and and essentially, 
What we wanted to do was, um, keeping with our priority of aligning our professional learning to express need, what the Tusker University faculty focus is, is essentially a, a program in which uh, teachers can submit proposals to the learning office, and Claire and I review those proposals, and we put together a schedule of learning sessions that each of our faculty members can engage in over a two-day period in late August. These learning sessions are, again, aligned to mission, vision, values, and, and express need. And, and most importantly, there's a cultural benefit to the Tuskegee University faculty focus in that sending, sending the very clear uh, uh, message to our, uh, our, our professional groups that we have an enormous amount of expertise within the, within the instructional faculty in our schools. And you know there are times in which we, we look outside for specific consultants that are experts in their field, but by and large, the expertise of our faculty really shines through in these, in, in these sessions. Uh, the other piece that I think is, is worth mentioning on the Tusker U faculty focus is that um, we very intentionally schedule the faculty focus sessions. Again, I mentioned it was two days. We overlap those days with our new teacher orientation as well. And so as new teachers are onboarded, we provide a very specific on-ramp for them to engage in professional learning in the district, sending the message that we are a learning organization, and within just a few hours of them beginning their employment in the district, um, they're engaged meaningfully with their colleagues around topics that are relevant and important to, to helping support the students of the summer. Central School District. Uh, one particular shout out um, to Susan is that Susan, though she was a new faculty member, also dove in directly into the uh, immediately into the Tusker U faculty focus and actually led sessions as well as engaging with those sessions as well. Um, we have a, a, a other new faculty members that, upon hearing about the opportunity to engage meaningfully in in, in this uh, program, they also offered to host sessions as well that were very well attended. Um, we, we did include on a link there, again, I apologize, it's difficult to see on the projector there, but if you do click, and for any audience member at home, you can click on the schedule there to see a full uh, listing of all of the courses that were offered this year during the Tuskegee Faculty Focus, as well as some feedback from the participants on that as well. Um, you can see that it is uh, very well um, um, supported by all those who attend that. Uh, following along with uh, the Tusker University theme, we also have what we call Tusker University Student Focus. Again, this was something that was started uh, during our during COVID. It, by, it was a means by which uh, we could ensure to the extent possible to, to keep a good, strong homeschool connection happening for our students when they were um, at home during, during the, the COVID pandemic. Um, we've had such good feedback uh, from that that we, we have continued that work. And so uh, this, is, uh, this is also a chance for our students to see our teachers as, as learners outside of necessarily their content area as well. So again, at the end there, uh, uh, there's, there is a schedule you can click on there at the end there that will show you some uh, of the sessions that were, uh, that were offered. Some highlights of that include there's one session called um, Dinosaurs at Play, uh, Crafting Effective Sentences, and that was hosted by one of our English teachers at the high school who spent uh, some time having fun with kids, learning about, uh, with silly sentences, learning really about the craft of creating really effective sentences. It's, it's one that I really uh, enjoyed. Uh, Myself, there's, there's some in there uh, on uh, engaging students with Minecraft as well, multiple different sessions uh, at different levels of access. There's some experiences in there for students to uh, augment their skills with coding with Scratch. And for our elementary students, there are some book clubs as well as uh, some opportunities for engagement um, at the elementary level um, there. Another mechanism we have for uh, engaging in professional learning is our in-service groups. In-service groups are um, small teams of teachers that come together uh, for I collaborative learning. Uh, the, each of our in-service courses that we offer um, range between seven and a half and 15 hours. And they're courses that are fully uh, fleshed out and developed by our faculty members and they're proposed to either Claire or myself or both of us and we review them. And, and, and the lens that we review them from is, are they aligned to our mission, vision, values? Are they things that are working, seeking to enhance student engagement? Are they relevant? And are they uh, allowing teacher voice and choice and agency over, over that learning? Are they research-based? Um, and uh, we have a few examples that we'd like to go through 
of some of the in-service groups that are ongoing in our district right now. Um, specifically, I'll spend a little bit of time talking uh, about the evidence-based grading team that formed uh, late last year and worked diligently over the summer and continues to work on evidence-based grading. Uh, if you recall, uh, in the spring, I believe it was, we actually had a parent during public comment speak at a board meeting about a visit that we took to Stevenson High School in Lincolnshire, Illinois. Um, that visit was transformational for all of the members of the, the team that went, the uh, Somers High School team that went on that visit. Um, and specifically, um, we leveraged the in-service model to really tie the learning experience that our teachers had at Stevenson High School um, to here in Somers. How do we apply what we've learned in Somers? And this is the forum that our teachers come together and they think very carefully and think deeply about what did I learn at Stevenson and what are the pieces that fit very well within uh, our culture here in Somers? Um, this evidence-based grading team came together, um, re was really struck by the idea at Stevenson that um, spending time meaningfully developing students and teachers understanding of what it means to be proficient in a given subject matter um, and and what the scales of proficiency are as learning progresses during a course um, really results in meaningful assessment experiences that are engaging and that are embedded within instructional experiences essentially what we saw when we went to stevenson was a mindset of thinking about assessment as a learning process rather than an outcome rather than an event that happens in the classroom. And this was something that um, I can say I, I was part personally of the bus ride back to the airport um, where the teachers were the most engaged that I've ever been, most energized that I've seen and uh, ever in my career. It was really quite something to, uh, to behold. And so this group of teachers came together and said, we have to do something about this. We have to learn more about this. Will you support us in learning how to bring that experience that we saw Stevenson students have and the ability of the students there to speak specifically about where they are in their learning and be so reflective in their learning. And you know, the conversations were really well aligned to our IB program. And we heard a lot of the IB learner profile traits being thrown around in that conversation. And we wanted to do more to support that. And so this team came together and have accomplished quite a bit so far. You can see on the left side of the screen, and for those at home, you can pull this up off of board docs. Um, you can see the objectives that they set out, and you can see how ambitious this team really is. And you can also see some feedback that they've provided to their facilitator, Tara Kearns, who's really been a phenomenal partner in helping to really uh, dive in and, and support her colleagues, uh, and frankly us, in our learning around uh, evidence-based grading. So there's some objectives there and some feedback. I, I think what drives the point home is really just helping the board and community understand the mission of this group. So if, if it's okay, I'd just like to read very briefly what the mission statement is that this group crafted over the summer. The Somers High School evidence-based grading team recognizes that an examination of Somers High School's current grading and reporting practices presents an opportunity to foster professional conversations about teaching and learning. We believe that these conversations will drive innovation in our instructional practices and result in increased evidence of learning for every student. In alignment with the mission, vision, and values of the Somers Central School District, inspired by the work of Stevenson High School and with consideration to the IB Learner Profile, we endeavor to implement grading and reporting practices that will develop a clear and cohesive relationship among curriculum instruction and assessment, emphasize the importance of the learning process, value student metacognition, feedback, and growth, communicate clear skills and standards to all stakeholders, and encourage a collaborative and reflective culture within the Somers professional learning community as well as among students. Uh, that's something that I, I don't think we could talk about the culture of professional learning in our district without understanding that that is a statement and this is a group that's developed by teachers um, and that is run and led by our teachers. It's really a point of pride um, for us. We, we have a, actually Kevin has a saying, he says it quite often, 
and it is when you when you name something you kill it um, and I'm only bringing that up because listening to Kevin talk about evidence-based grading and the work that that team has done and being part of those those work sessions um, just really recognizing the alignment that that has with um, everything else we're doing in the district including our MYP and IB implement IB MYP implementation as well as the maintenance of the diploma program, um, these, these two in service groups are, are more aligned than different and really support each other in the work that they're both trying to accomplish. And so I'm here tonight to talk a little bit about the other in service group that's running and has been running for the past several years at the middle school and for the past two years at the high school. And those, those are the MYP implementation teams. Our two MYP coordinators lead teams of educators at the middle and high school. Um, who facilitate professional learning for the faculty and ensure that the requirements set forth by the International Baccalaureate Program for MYP accreditation are met. Uh, the middle school was the first to start this work um, and they started their journey uh, and Jenna Scatino leads that team of 17. Um, they successfully submitted their application for accreditation on June 24th of last year and we are patiently awaiting the date of our accreditation visit from IB as we speak, where uh, that will be happening this year. Aaron Stewart leads the MYP implementation team at the high school, and their application for candidacy was approved last year. Um, and they are also engaging in full faculty um, professional learning around unit development, around international and MY baccalaureate program and MYP approaches to teaching and learning and setting forth their uh, meeting, making sure that they'll be poised to meet the requirements set forth for IB for full accreditation in the, in the coming years. Um, and so those two, those two teams are working in uh, coordination and also have overlapping members with the evidence-based grade reporting team at the, high, at the high school level anyway. The, the two in-service groups that we talked about are just samples of some of the in-service that's happening. Um, we do have two others that we wanted to illuminate for the board uh, that are upcoming for this school year. So we'll be able to report out um, at this time next year in similar fashion to what we just did in, with, with the equivalent detail to what we just did with the last two for these upcoming ones. One is on executive functioning. Um, the purpose of that is to develop uh, and scale essential tools teachers need to address executive functioning needs of students. Uh, this is something that is prevalent in schools, has become an increased need um, since the pandemic, and it's something that we're addressing um, first and foremost through these in-service groups. We're also uh, offering uh, an in-service course on the science of reading as well, to, uh, whose purpose is to develop and scale essential tools teachers need to Oh, it says executive functioning again. Uh, we'll have to fix that. Uh, and this is, this is really a, a similar in, th in the uh, think tank sort of idea where teachers are coming together and researching and learning about the science of reading and all the tools necessary for us to engage meaningfully in ensuring that our, our reading, the way in which we are helping students to learn how to read is aligned very well to research-based practices. We are very interested in, in, in ensuring that those stakeholder groups that we started this uh, conversation with earlier are appropriately engaged with us to the extent that they're able. And so please, for any community member that's watching, please avail yourselves of the opportunities to engage with us. Um, we have three planned. Um, we don't have exact dates yet. We have to make a little bit of changes recently. Um, but we have three conversation, three opportunities guaranteed through our Trust Creek University Family Focus events um, this year planned. One is a community conversation um, where uh, Dr. Blanche will lead us um, through a conversation about the direction of the district. We also have a wellness summit planned. Um, in October, we're working on solidifying a date for that. And we will again uh, run an academic information night. So for parents, please stay tuned for a survey that goes out. We're gonna follow the same uh, structure that we did last year, that um, we had very good feedback from those that were able to attend and we're hoping to increase the number of parents that are able to attend this year. Again, for those at home that are listening, the structure of that is um, we invite faculty members from across the district within certain content areas and grade levels to come and simply chat with parents about any topic that they're interested in. So prior to that night, we'll send 
send out an interest survey to our parents and we'll ask if there's any specific areas that they're interested in to ensure that we have the right faculty members in the room. But of course, we'll have a, a broad spectrum of faculty available for parents to engage meaningfully and in a, in a more conversational style with, and that'll take place in this room. Um, that is tentatively scheduled for March 14th from 6 to 7.30 here in this room. I think that's all. Oh, uh, in addition to that, I think I hope it goes without saying that anybody that has any questions, any parent, any parents or uh, caregivers in the community that have any questions, Claire and I are always uh, uh, willing to engage with anybody. Please send us an email. Um, we'll be sure to. Uh, highlight uh, how to find us on the website. Uh, my name is a little difficult to spell, um, but we'll make sure that you have um, access to that. The learning office is, is a partner in our community and any parents that have any questions, whether it be about um, professional learning or any of our curriculum instruction or assessment in the district where we've, we've really enjoyed and appreciated the opportunities we've had to engage with parents over the last year. So please um, know that we're here to, to engage with anybody. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thank, well, thank you. you, Claire. Any questions? I did. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, I had a, a few questions and comments. Sure. First, of, first of all, I love the Tusker University student, family, and faculty focus. It just shows we're all learning together, so I love that. Um, and I love that the student focus is like K to 12, which is great. Mm. I wonder, and this is like for you to think about, like, is there any, any merit in having like a vision that kind of ties across all three foci? Meaning, like, as opposed to teachers learning something completely different, students learning some, complete, something co completely different, families learning... Is there something that we could do where like there's conversation across all of those groups, like mm. a certain workshop, that's something to think about. Um, Evidence-based grading, how is that different from standards-based grading? For my own edification. Uh, it, it, the language choice there is very intentional and that's something that the group's really wrestling with. I'm gonna be completely transparent with you. I, I think the best person to speak about that or the best people would be the people really engaged in that, that learning. Um, uh, my language has been corrected a few times on that. Mm -hmm. I had to mm -hmm. do some relearning and unlearning mm -hmm. myself yeah. about standards-based versus evidence-based. Claire stood up, so I'm assuming you have something to contribute <laughs> to that. Um, I, I, I don't wanna get in trouble with no, and I had a, <laughs> I, I had a follow-up to that, but yes, I mean, either. Yeah. I think there's, there's something um, related to the idea that standards-based grading puts the focus on the, the standards, the external standards, and the evidence-based grading really puts the focus on student evidence of mastery mm -hmm. of the standards. So we're really trying to focus on students, on the process, and, and make sure that our language is matching, um, matching that philosophy. So I think they're the same. It's just using the word evidence versus standards so kids are not focusing on standards. But I think that the, the, the tool is essentially the same. How is this different from what was happening in class before? Meaning, was evidence not being used and it, or is it being used more now? Is I guess what's what's the change? Where do I want to start? There's a lot here. The, for, the starting point for evidence-based grading is first defining what proficiency is in a classroom and also defining the scales of proficiency and, and being able to have a student be able to appropriately have evidence to support a claim of where they are in the journey towards proficiency for every piece of learning that happens in the classroom. Now, um, practically speaking, um, with a the classical grading system that we have in our schools, that frankly isn't the case at all times throughout uh, the whatever the marking term or the marking quarter is as well. And so it's being able first and foremost to articulate what does proficiency mean within this, within all the different con standards that they have to, and also understanding where at any point in time where they are on the journey towards proficiency. So there's scales of proficiency within there. Go ahead. And, and I think just adding, adding to what Kevin already said is really leveraging our grading system to be more communicative. Um, so for example, we, if we take two students who are in a class and they both have, let's say, a 70, um, in the traditional grading system that's currently being used, one could have a 70 because um, they've, they've um, done every piece of classwork and every piece of homework and met other criteria. However, assessments might be a challenge and so some of those assessment grades might lower the overall grade of zero to 100. Uh, the other student may have gotten 100 on all the tests, however, may have missed some homework assignments or other criteria that 
um, plays into that 70. So those 70s represent two very different students. And so we're really examining how we could leverage our grading practices to communicate better about where students are, where their strengths are, and then where their areas of growth are and, and share that and use that, leverage that as a way to increase the homeschool connection and parent partnership. Because if we improve our communication, then everyone has a better idea of how to support the students. I mean, it sounds great, so I'm assuming that it's going to happen in all classes because I think all parents or all caregivers should know, like, what is it that we need to, need to do to support the kids? I mean, it sounds great. I'm like, everybody should be doing it. Well, I don't want to alarm the community. Uh, <laughs> this is not something that we're doing in all classes right now. We are very much in a learning phase right now. We have a group of teachers who are really invested in making sure that what, what, we, what changes we do propose are very clear, the philosophy behind them are clear, we're appropriately communicating with family members before we change anything. And we understand the broad implications. Of These are all uh, pieces of advice that we've gotten from Stevenson as we think about implementing this as well. Um, so any student who is in a class currently where this is being investigated, um, parents have been communicated with in a very clear way and conversations have happened with those, those families. As of right now, it is not a broad reaching um, initiative across the Somers High School. It is, it is possible that it could, be, could go in that direction um, and there are a lot of really great things aligned to our mission and vision that, that it may happen. Um, Claire alluded to, I just wanted to follow up a little bit also on, on the error of averages that we talk about that Claire was discussing as well, two students who are getting a 90 in class. Uh, are we communicating what that 90 really means to those students? And that's one of the, the big differences. And, and there's, there's quite a bit also on feedback within here as well. We know that you know, there's intentional and unintentional feedback. And one of the big pieces of this is thinking about what unintentional feedback our current grading practices have um, on on students, you know, and that's where uh, oftentimes labels start to come, or students' perceptions of self and perceptions of worth become tied up in the number of their grade, as opposed to illuminating a path forward for them to be able to build proficiency, which is really important. We know good feedback causes a cognitive reaction, not an emotional one, and that's something that we're really thinking deeply about as we do this. But as of right now, to directly answer your question, this is not um, broad-reaching. They're considered pilots right now this year. That's correct. correct. I just, I, I like the idea of how it does connect to the middle years program as well, though, because I feel like that, like shifting that style of thinking and teaching um, with the middle years program really seems to align with what you guys are talking about here. Yeah, one of the, the, the most engaging pieces for us in this was, and I think it's reflected on that slide there on the feedback, was the aha moment that mm -hmm. came when teachers recognized the alignment between this. That was a really powerful moment for all of us to say, wow, this is, this is exactly in support of all the work that we're doing. And so we're, we are currently thinking also about um, how to bring this to scale in a, in a way that's reasonable and appropriate and, val and, and gives the opportunity for all folks to learn in the same way that this core group has at the high school. But right now it's a pilot. Seems like a philosophical shift, right? Instead of grades being done to somebody, they're being collected or aggregated or demonstrated with the student who's getting that grade. Yeah, it's a great way of putting it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which seems like just the general shift that we're moving towards, right? Having our students' evidence demonstrate evidence of their progress so that they see that their ability is limitless and that we're gonna give them the skills they need to thrive. Yes, and it's because it is a cultural shift that we are, um, there's a requirement for us to be slow and intentional about how we do this because there are um, other factors of a student's learning experience that are tied up in grades that we do, do not want to negatively impact as we go through this. And so by taking the time to do this as a pilot to really learn deeply and think carefully and critically about all of the implications of this, we're confident that the changes that we do put in place will, will have a lasting impact. So just, can I ask a question for clarity? Sorry, Chad, please. Yes, please. So, so it sounds like um, w the way that you presented all of the learning that our, our um, faculty and staff were able to engage in the summer, so there was the leadership summer, uh, summit, and then there was the leadership work where you said that there were 85%, I wrote down, of faculty who were engaged, right? Um, and then all of that summer work uh, funneled into those 91 teams that then came back to the buildings and sort of turnkey or whatever their, their summer work into little groups so that that first week of in-service when our kids weren't in school but our teachers were here, 
they were working with those 91 teams that you supported over the summer to engage in that learning. Is that accurate? Did I reflect that? Um, almost. What happens is, and the, the, you're referring to the, the, the 91 proposals that engaged 85 percent of the faculty in summer curriculum work over the summer, the expectation is that throughout the year, those teams will turnkey and lead learning for full faculty or grade level or subject specific teams. It's not, it doesn't all happen, it, it doesn't funnel as, as clearly as I think you suggested into in-service teams, uh, but it certainly spreads throughout the community. The in-service teams are part of that and also separate and ongoing throughout the year as well. But they live in the faculty focus, the Tusker U faculty focus, yes, throughout the year or throughout? Yes but not always, yes. <laughs> like, uh, uh, in addition to all those, the opportunities we spoke about tonight, we also have the professional learning full days and half days in which teams will be invited to share their learning and lead faculty through facilitation of faculty-focused professional learning. Thank you. I, I think one, one way to maybe clarify that is um, there's differences in structure and then there's the content within those structures. And so the Tusker University faculty focus versus the in-service are two different structures in which our faculty members can engage. There is crossover in content and sometimes in faculty members that engage in both of those types of learning. Um, but they're, they're different structures that take place at different times during the summer and that's a, a, an attempt on our part to vary the form and to vary the time um, of engagement that we have so that we have the opportunity to have as broad reach as possible across the district. It's because we have those varied structures that we had such a broad reach of faculty members and staff mm -hmm. members across the district. Thank you very much, Kevin, Claire, appreciate it. Yeah, I have a question. Oh, sorry, on, too fast. Um, <laughs> Not I have a question on your, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> the 17 courses that you, you know, in your charts mentioned, can you sort of give a, uh, a little more detail what are these courses, or are there any courses related to science or science research program? The Tusker U Fashion. Yeah, 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 the, the Tusker for the student. The student. Ah, the student. The 17 courses, right? Yes. Or as for yeah, students? Yeah, the 13 faculty, right. yes. I just want to make sure I have the right. You're asking for the Tusker University student edition. Were there any courses specifically about science research? Yeah, particularly, this is the summer, right? The summer courses? Hmm. Yes, the answer is no. There were not courses specifically geared towards science research for students over the summer. Okay, um, then my following up question, as you know, uh, we had some background conversation. Uh, I would like to see that the summer being used as a you know a period of time that en encourage students to engage in science research because that's first of all you have a long period of time secondly uh, you know we do want to sort of bring the uh, middle school or early year high school students into this direction so what do you think uh, is there any possibility for building up in that direction. I, I think the, the possibilities, in a, in with a faculty as talented as ours, the possibilities are endless. I, I think as I started the conversation about our goals being to align the summer learning opportunities and the filtering mechanism we use to support different learning opportunities are aligned specifically to the district mission, vision, values, and the established priorities and success plans of each of the buildings. So as of for this year, as we go through that process, augmenting and building that science research program was not a specific targeted priority that we have. And so we, given the efforts of our leadership teams in each of our buildings to establish SMART goals and our building principles to ensure that those goals are well aligned to the district priorities, um, you know, we're, we try to be very mindful and sensitive um, to making sure that the, the, the resources that we have are allocated specifically in support of the achievement of those goals. Now, that said, um, I, I agree with you that, that there is opportunity certainly to do that, and that's something that we can take on board and, and think deeply about helping our staff uh, recognize the value of that program. Not that they don't already, it is certainly a, a flagship program of ours. Um, but that, that's the reason why we started the presentation with establishing what our priorities were in helping to decide what, what courses we supported. Sorry, I don't know if I misunderstood. Ifa, you didn't mean augmenting the science research program at the no, high school. You mean just having kids do science, scientific 
projects yeah, over the summer. Whatever. I, that's that's how I read. We encourage people to do into science. STEM. Yeah. So, certainly, there were courses thematically based on science. Uh, I thought I heard you say specifically about science research, but uh, engaging meaningfully in good scientific practices, learning science and engineering practices, to use the language of the new standards. Um, cer certainly, there were opportunities for that. Um, I should, maybe you should. Uh, I, my kids participated in this program, but I maybe it would be helpful to just kind of explain how these programs come about. Like, did the faculty come to you with these proposals? Do you go to them? And kind of like, I mean, right. these are like a week long segment, and like maybe that's not understood by everybody, and maybe that. Would yeah. Be so, so again, the goal of the the Tuskegee University student focus, it's, in its original inception, as I mentioned, was during COVID, and its, its goal was specifically to ensure good continued connectivity between the school and students um, when they weren't able to engage meaningfully um, over the summer. And so, Amanda, to directly answer your question, um, our faculty come to us with proposals based on what they are seeing a felt need is within their, their courses and for the students with whom they work. Um, we also ask our faculty to think about exposing themselves as learners of content outside of their own, what students typically see them in. And so you'll see some faculty members there that are working outside. But, but the process is that um, our, you know, our communications out to faculty remind them of the district mission, vision, values, all the things I, I talked about in terms of goal alignment. And we ask them to think deeply about the students with whom they work and their own expertise, both within their content and as, as lifelong learners, and to think about how they might meaningfully engage with students to ensure that students stay well connected with our faculty members over the summer. That's essentially the scope of our. So we set the, we set the framework of alignment. We set the framework of alignment. And then this is, the, especially for these student opportunities, it's really, we ask everyone to think of, you know, have it be passion based. What are you hearing passions from the students and what are your own passions? And so every year it differs because it depends on the context. It depends on, you know, we had fewer options this year and maybe that's because it tells a little bit about the context of where educators were at the end of last year. Um, but we, we really try not to dictate the topics. We, we, we hope that this is more of a grassroots kind of movement in which students and teachers are working together to determine what could be an engaging activity for us to stay connected over the summer. And and certainly we can think about you know how we might encourage what you're suggesting as we move forward yeah because the science research I mentioned is because that area we do need a little bit of concerted effort rather than let uh, students uh, you know just pick their interests whatever they want to do in the summer this concerted effort probably depends on uh, the school district and the faculty sort of uh, you know come up with a uh, attractive program. Sorry, I had one more thing. Only because like when people speak, you get, you get ideas. Um, yeah. The first thing was um, faculty focus. You had impact. You talked about te uh, teacher feedback. Again, if kids are spending some time in these passion-based courses over the summer, like how do we gauge impact? It'd be nice to see like what are students actually saying, and maybe it's serving them, serving families. It wasn't included. Uh, maybe you did, but it wasn't included. So that was something I thought about. If I could just um, respond to that yeah, quickly. Yeah, please, please, um, please. Yes, we absolutely did ask for that, and we did re request that. We also committed to our teachers not to publicize that, and that's the reason it wasn't included. Um, and, and, and Dr. Chang, I also just wanted to just be clear about the fact that I, I do think our science research program is quite attractive the way that it is currently. I agree with you that we need to, you know, we can think deeply about that, but I want to be clear to the community that we have a phenomenal science research program um, here in Somers that is quite attractive. Sorry. Last question. So summer curriculum work, I think you said they worked in pairs or larger groups? Correct. Okay. Nobody worked independently. It was always like paired or? That's correct. And it was always aligned with district mission, vision goals. Like it had to have some sort of nexus with that. That's correct. Thank you. So I think, um, Ife, to your point, a lot of the, what was offered here looked like it aligned very well to that, you know, NGS, whatever, the, the science standards. So I, f I feel like maybe communicating how it, it aligns to science standards maybe, and I'm sure that that happened, knowing the teachers that were teaching these courses, that they probably were using those com those that language with the yeah. kids in the classroom. Um, but I wonder when I look at 17 courses offered and 13 faculty members, but only 29 registered students, what can we do to better encourage uh, exactly kids to point. join okay. these amazing 
programs, mm-hmm. right? Because, I mean, how fun. Who doesn't want to do Minecraft and dinosaur <laughs> stories? Uh, we also share that thinking, and they're thinking about planning for next year, getting getting the you know communication out earlier, but be marketing it better. Um, the past the previous two summers were extremely well enrolled and registered, um, and we attribute that a little bit to the fact that there wasn't a lot of oh, other yeah. stuff competing with these courses for students. Um, and so now that we're back into a, a normal summer where students are we're competing with camps and sports and everything else we need to think deeply about what's the timing how can we make this fit into people's schedules maybe it's offering later in the day but we'll, we're, we're working on that too because we agree we'd like to see more thank you thanks Kevin thanks Claire I'll try it again thanks guys thank you <laughs> one more just kidding <laughs> <laughs> alright so it looks like oh look at this we've gotten to the board discussion uh, trustees, we had discussed the committees that we formed. Uh, several of them are already in existence. Some of them are new, including the, the planning committee, the communications, which has been around for, for a while now. But in hopes of sort of codifying what these committees do, we also thought it would be important to have chair people for the committees that we have to discuss in public session. Is that right, Nancy? So we can just have this conversation. Um, I know that some people were on committees that they might want to move around, um, but I, I know we need somebody for policy, communication, audit, and planning for certain. And then I'd like to encourage that we have liaisons for the other committees that are not centralized with the board, just so that those folks are coming back and at the end of our meetings when we do board comments, we can speak to a place of, you know, hey, I know Nick, you had run a, a planning meeting. I think you are informally the chair. Uh, so then you might then come to the meeting and say, hey, this is what we did in public session so the rest of the board can hear. Um, so would anybody like to volunteer or would you like me to volunteer? Tear you. <laughs> Von told, yeah, just volunteer. I can, I can volunteer tell you. I mean, I was thinking, I know, um, go ahead, please, Chad. I'll just say, if I can, I can chair the policy committee. I was, I was good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I was actually going to ask if you might do audit. Because mm. you seem to have been doing that quite well and communicating it very clearly. Yeah. But well, I'm happy to swap yeah. around. I, that, I had my ask for Chad. Chad, would you please be the audit person? But if you want to do policy, do policy. And we can stick someone else in audit. Yeah, I, I want to add that uh, I just noticed that my name was removed from policy committee, which I was surprised. And I really don't want to leave that committee. And it's one of my passion, actually. So I, if you don't mind, I would like to be back into the the policy committee. I have you on policy committee. I don't know who it's else not, was supposed to It's not to on the website. For, for some reason, I, I noticed. Yeah, but uh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I but that's okay. So list. we're talking about the chair, which it is the person the that would then come back, back to the end and right. report back. So I have under policy, I have Heidi, Chad, and Ife. And I was going to ask Ife because I know he really likes policy. But if you want to do it, we can, so I don't know, we can yeah, do this I'll be happy to way. do it, sure. Well, Chad actually wanted to do it. And let me just go through all of them. So then we have communications committee, where it's Mary Rose, Nick, and Amanda. Uh, We have audit, which is Chad, Nick, and myself. And then we have planning, which is Nick, Ife, and Amanda. So just based on what you all seem to like doing, I thought that perhaps we might ask Ife to do policy, because he seems very vested in the, the policy side. I was hoping Amanda might be okay with communications. I was thinking maybe Chad would be the lead on audit. Um, Nick, planning. And then we have other folks. But I, just thinking, I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> so I'll volunteer do it. for planning. It. Unless, uh... I, unless somebody else wants to do planning. So it's planning is Nikki, Faye, and Amanda. Do the three of you. I'm fine with Nick. I mean, he's already kind of taken the lead on it. So it's mm-hmm. good with me. Ife, are you okay with Nick? Well, yeah, I've been with uh, the planning committee with uh, Amanda and Nick. No, but Nick is going to chair the committee. That's fine. That's okay? Yeah. Excellent. Whoever chairs okay. is fine with All me. right. Making progress. So we have planning committee. Excellent. Um, so then we have, uh, let's do communication. So communication is Mary Rose, Nick, and Amanda. Mary Rose, Amanda, if Nick's doing planning, <laughs> let's do one of you guys. I'm happy to be voluntold <laughs> or volunteer. I don't mind either way. So. I didn't want to, I knowing your time commitment, I just wanted to be respectful. I appreciate so, that, but yeah, we all have it, so I'm, 
I can do it if you can do it. I don't care. Sorry, I don't want to volunteer. You throw you. it in the air. It doesn't, really <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Oh, please, friends. Who's going to, which one of you trustees is going to? Uh, Mary Rose or Amanda? Sorry, Nick, you're out of I'll this do one. It. I'll do it. Yeah. You want to do? Amazing. Okay. So Mary Rose will do communication. Uh, and then we have audit, which is Chad, myself, and Nick. You don't want to do it? I'm not. I'm not I can, I'm fine. I'm fine doing it. This I can is do really, it. It's about somebody reporting reporting back. So it's right. all of us just just step forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would have. You do a good job. I, yeah. I would have picked policy just based on involvement over the past. No, you still can join. Have, but it's, you still can be the policy. We're all here. No, we're no, all no, here. We're all sitting at the table. <laughs> I'm fine. I'll do audit. Yes. If Efe wants to, if Efe. Really because I can't audit. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, he's also not on the audit it's committee. All, well, we'll see. <laughs> so, we'll see. Historically, it's a pretty short list. Yes, but at the reorg meeting, you all discussed as to who was going to be on what committee. Correct, so we, did. we did. We did. We already did that. We already chairperson did that. stuff. I think. Uh, we're doing chairperson now, and for yes, some reason, correct. Ife was left off of policy, which I don't know how that happened. Right, Ife is not on the policy no. committee. So I don't think that like was at that last website, meeting. We, on the website, it says Heidi. Let's see. Hold on. Who's who's on it? Who's yeah, it says it, it says Heidi, Chad, and Nick. Nick. Yeah. So if oh, you had a fourth, Nick. then How did you get on that? Quorum. And I right, and, and I think that's from the last meeting you had. That's where it landed. I don't. So can we? Can always it. I mean, yeah. Try step down. <laughs> <laughs> we can Whatever we can volunteer you to step it down. Just can, stepping down. We're, I, we're legally I'll copy paste. That's all I've been doing. <laughs> Hereby resign. <laughs> From the policy committee. Resolution accepted. <laughs> All in favor, aye. Do we, need, do we need to vote? Yeah. Do we need to vote, Nancy? No. Nope. Are you sure? Yeah. We're not breaking any. She's like, please don't. No, it's okay. <laughs> so we're removing Nick from the policy committee and adding Efe. There we go. Okay. Because otherwise we'd have four in a quorum. And then it would be quorum and we'd be yeah. having yeah. public session and that would be bad. Um, all right. So can we. Yes, we're good. We're good? Okay. Audit, uh, what are you again? Policy. policy. Okay. So you'll be reporting back. Hmm? So Ife is okay. the chair. Chair, yeah. Ife on policy, Mary Rose communication, Chad audit, Nick planning. Uh, so Amanda, you uh, we, can ha we can talk about liaisons also. I am on the CWAC committee, so mm -hmm. I could certainly report back on anything for that. Could you liaise for us? I can liaise. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Where else might we need liaising? I'm on the sports committee, whatever the complex athletics. athletics. Yeah, right now the, the sports. Yep. Okay. So you'll liaise for the sports? Liaison, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm on liaison. I think safety. Your safety. You're also on, um, Nancy, help me. The citizens finance. Citizens Thank finance. you. Citizens yeah. finance. Oh yeah, I think I'm on that too. Oh, so are you, Amanda? I see Amanda and Ife. I don't see you on that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think I was on the citizens finance. Mm -hmm. Oh. You're on the district wide safety. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that was by nomination by. Just. It was, that, it was at our meeting. We kind of just. Yeah. Historically. Tried to spread it out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else? That you see? No. Do we, I mean, I know I'm still doing, I think Heidi and I are both doing seat. Yes. Mm -hmm. You want, well, let's, we should ask because she's not here. Yeah. Do you want to ask her? That's fine. We can ask and talk about it in the well, next we, meeting. We can vote here. <laughs> <laughs> we can volunteer Heidi, Heidi. Are we volunteering her? <laughs> Heidi, wherever you are, you'll also be doing technology, transportation, <laughs> and <laughs> calls. What else you got, Ray? So the ones you mentioned with transportation and technology, those would be forthcoming. So Great. we'll we'll, get a, we'll follow back up once those get established a little bit later in the year. So. The hope is that we could have somebody who is going to see your head and, and bring back, but liaison, yes, yep. for sure. Um, excellent. Any questions? Okay, uh, we're on to minutes. So be it resolved, the Board of Education, having received copies of minutes of the meetings uh, presented, appear, approves the same motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstained, excellent board action. Uh, personnel consent agenda, be it resolved that the Board of Education upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools hereby approves the attached personnel agenda motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstained, excellent. CSE, CPSE, be it resolved that the Board of Education having received copies of recommendations of the meetings as listed uh, hereby approves the same motion. So moved. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 And, okay. Um, uh, business consent agenda, excuse me. Be it resolved that the Board of Education, upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, hereby approves the attached business agenda. Motion? So moved. Second. Chris? Just the uh, one item I did want to highlight is the settlement of the tax certiorari proceeding for what's commonly known as the Pepsi property. Um, it's been uh, many years in the, in the making and the town was able to settle that and keep us informed the entire way. It was a, a good partnership. And now that that is settled, we can, and again, we've been planning for that for multiple years, putting money into our tax tertiary reserve fund for this. And now we can pay this amount and then move on to the next big one that is kind of sitting out there. Any information on the next big one that's kind of sitting out there? Not at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Forthcoming. Yes. With the liaisons. Any questions, folks? Thank you, Chris. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstained? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Somer Central School District hereby appoints uh, Andrew Levin as school district medical consultant. Uh, Dr. Levin's fee shall not exceed $500 per hour for evaluations, examinations, and any work related thereto, and $3,500 uh, per day, $2,500 half day of testimony. Motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Okay, so next we have a NISBA voting delegate. Uh, Heidi had suggested that she was interested. If, if that's all right with everyone, I'd like to put her name forward. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Chad? Ife, yeah? Yes, yes. Excellent. Okay, so whereas the NISBA annual meeting will be held virtually on October 17th, be it resolved that the Somers Board of Education does hereby select and approve Board of Education Trustee Heidi uh, Camberary to virtually attend the NISBA annual business meeting with no cost incurred. Motion? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Excellent. Uh, so now we've come again to the public comment. I'm going to just read what's here, that speakers will properly identify themselves. Uh, folks are asked to limit to three minutes per speaker. Speakers may comment on matters of public interest involving school operations, programs, but may not criticize or personally attack any individual connected with the school district. No employee or student may be named or commented, identified by name or situation. Questions asked by the, pub, uh, by the public will be referred to the appropriate staff member for reply at a later time or date. Questions requiring investigations will be refer referred excuse me, to the superintendent for consideration and later response. All written statements shall be given to the district clerk, Nancy, for inclusion in the record of the meeting. Thank you. Um, my name is Matt Galino. Uh, I'm, I'm a Somers resident. Uh, and I'm here today in my capacity as president of the Somers Youth Football Organization, which is part of, so of SISO, Somers Youth Sports Organization. Uh, our youth football program includes a little more than, a little under 300 children ages kindergarten through eighth grade, uh, including 188 in our third through eighth grade tackle programs. Um, I simply wanted to come today to express uh, the importance of the school's assets uh, to our entire organization. Uh, we wanted you to know that the nearly 70 adult volunteers, uh, along with the children I referenced in our program, take great pride uh, in the facilities that are shared with us, and that these valuable assets, along with the strong dedication of our volunteers, has enabled us to build uh, a, a very, one of the very best programs in the county and beyond. Uh, this applies not only to the school's beautiful turf fields, for which the administration has been so generous, uh, but also our use of the scoreboard, PA system, uh, and press box during our games. Uh, this enables us to make our game days for our tackle program something very, very special. Uh, I would further highlight the benefits of our collaboration with the high school football program, uh, which collaborates with our coaches both on strategy uh, and on technique, uh, making our program one of the safest, we believe, in our, in, in, in our league. Uh, this also has the benefit of high school athletes serving as mentors uh, to the children in our program. This creates a great sense of community and common culture uh, in our program that our children can feel a great part of through their careers as student athletes. It also allows our children to interact with role models whose footsteps many hope to soon follow. Uh, it is our hope that the uh, district management evaluates, as the, as the district evaluates its policies, uh, it continues uh, to consider us in their, in their planning and that we, um, both, both for existing plans and for 
uh, revising existing policies. We understand that high school athletes do and should take priority over youth sports, and we would never contest this. Uh, after all, a great many of them have come through our program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. No. Any other comments? Kevin, did you want to join again? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, all right, so we have come to the board member comments. I'll go. Uh, so a couple of things. Uh, so quick, I'll give you an update on the, uh, as I'm officially chair, I guess. The, uh, I'll give you an update on the policy committee meeting. We did meet. Um, planning committee. Planning committee. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Out of policy. That's That's from yes. that one. <laughs> Another change. <laughs> change. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not going back. Mind racing. <laughs> The planning committee meeting. So we had a meeting uh, last week with the, uh, the representatives from the board um, and also um, Ray and his cabinet team. Um, what we did is we're trying to just go through the overall goal setting process and you know to you know, review what's already in place. You know, with the school, the school has a, a pretty decent, you know, a significant process in place where they go through and they communicate with the, the community members and the teachers and the board and all that stuff um, and just taking a look at that and what the, how that works into our overall calendar um, what the different kind of checkpoints will be in the board meetings and and all that so uh, this is the first meeting we presented a draft um, I will share that with the rest of the board what that draft was and then I could have breakout conversations with you guys if you have some input on it um, and then I think in the next couple of weeks we're scheduled uh, Ray and I will iterate through that uh, process as we go through um, but that's going to include things as kind of the, our December meetings in there is when we'll sit down and, and all the events leading up to that and the planning and uh, all the meetings that, you know, again, the cabinet is doing and the administration is doing now in, in gathering all the, uh, the information. Um, so we think we're coming up with a, a way to better illustrate that uh, and just show all the effort that's going in and all the different inputs and outputs that are currently in place and then also give us uh, as board members avenues into you know, where we'll take a look at each of those bits of information. Right, I miss anything on that? No, it was great, thank you, Nick. Um, so that was good. Uh, Mr. Galino's comment, uh, you know, again, that brings up uh, this weekend, it was it was interesting, a, a little story. Uh, I, I was on the you know, football fields uh, and we're, we're there and we're playing, I think it was Wappingers, and they have, maybe 18 or 20 kids playing football. And, you know, most teams that we play in towns we play are, are generally pretty small. And then we show up, I think we have 35, you know, in ours. And that's a single grade. That's sixth grade that I'm uh, coaching now. Um, so 35 kids in that one and all the different programs are 35. She's like, man, how do you have so many kids? And it's, uh, you know, I kind of just thought about it and it, it resonates, you know, back. I told her, like, it's the connectedness in the community and we are lucky to, you know, we're on those fields there. And I, I just, you know, I see my son and, you know, all the kids, you know, my sons and my daughters and all that stuff as young kids, you know, walking on and high-fiving the high schoolers walking off the mm -hmm. field, right? And seeing the coaches and, you know, the, the head coaches will know their names when they were young and all that stuff. Um, but it just has that community feeling though too. And you tie that into, you know, what Kevin and Claire were talking about too in the Tusker University and how we're tying that into the community uh, conversations that we're having, right? And that's, it's just a, great uh, it, it's such a you know f that connected tissue right and, and there's you know many other stories that I'm, I'm hearing about people that are, you have know, gone off to you know private schools and coming back because the other kids want to come back because they miss that feel and all that stuff so anyway I just wanted to you know share that story about kind of not just the stuff we're doing in the schools which is you know great too but the the everything that the schools are involved in in the overall you know, community association and programs and mentorships and things like that that our kids do is uh just has a, a big impact on you know kind of our, our mission and vision as far as the you know whole child, the whole child. Whole child yep. and everything so and a big thank you to all the volunteers because that's yeah. so much of that is volunteer driven it's really really amazing when you have something of that scale Really great, I, great for our kids, and I, I know I'm sure it's great for the volunteers. I, everybody gets so much out of that. Yep, impressive. No, 
I'll go. I, I, <laughs> I, ha I just want to say that I was really excited to see for the in focus groups next year for the executive function in science of reading. I think those are really great things to bring to um, our school district K through 12. And um, I'm happy that the Tusker University student focus groups are continuing because I, I know we've partaken in them every year. So, um, and they're just great programs and great connections to um, have that over the summer. But I also want to say I attended my first Westchester Putnam School Board Association meeting last night that was a focus on mental health in schools, which is why I attended because I am the liaison, I guess you could say, to the CUAC committee, the Social Emotional Wellness Advisory Committee um, that we started our work with last year. And we're going to be going forward with our first meeting next week. So I look forward to reporting back to the board um, at our next meeting for whatever we do there. Um, but it was great to hear from other school districts of what they're doing to support student mental health. Um, and a lot of everybody was talking about how it was really more of a, they started a lot and then paused with COVID and then had to come back to a lot and um, implementing all of the programs. And Somers is doing all the programs that everyone else is doing too. Like we're not missing anything. And in fact, we're one of the few school districts that, was, that has this social emotional wellness advisory committee or a committee like it that focuses on student mental health for all grade levels. So I think it's great that our schools going forward with this, I think it's so important. And um, it, it's a, just a great way to um, connect with all the kids to focus on their strengths and have success for the school. Yeah. I, I don't have much to say except for the fact that um, I feel like this is the first school year we've started in a while that feels like it's post-COVID or peri-COVID. I don't know where we are with this, but um, <laughs> it just feels good. And just listening to Sarah speak about all the different activities and events and games and sports, it just feels like I don't think we're out of the woods of COVID ever, but it just feels different. And I'm just excited to kind of do this year with everybody. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, no, it does feel that way. And um, and welcome back, everybody, um, kids, uh, educators. Um, been through a lot the last couple of years, and, and uh, the presentations, you know, what have been um, that that we got today about some of the, the programs and, and the professional learning that goes on really highlights the the care and thought I, that I see the district go through and and I, I find it really impressive and and it's not because it's always looking forward I mean I, I'm always amazed at the planning and everything that goes into each one of these programs and there's a lot of different things always going on um, and and they're not haphazard and, and if you have questions about them and, and you, you inquire there's tremendous information and, and I appreciate being on board and being close to that and being able to learn a lot um, but it is also the there's always this the sense of there's a purpose for this looking back at you know what did the kids go through the last couple of years what did our educators go through the last couple of years and what are some of the things that are needed you know maybe to get us get some of them back up up to speed I mean we've heard about some of the gaps through COVID uh, whether it's the social emotional and clearly uh, we're tackling that uh, head on as, as best we can. Um, I'm sure there. I, I've heard of you know some of the learning gaps that uh, occur with some of that too. Um, but whenever I hear about the structures on on how you're putting the um, the curriculum together, uh, always seems to be paying attention to those things um, as best you can. So. I just want to give a lot of appreciation. Um, I, I think we've got great professionals, great caring people here, and thank you for that. Thanks. Okay. I just have two points to make. Uh, first, uh, uh, I would like to say Nick did a good job in uh, r sort of running the planning committee, that's first committee, first meeting. I think we should have this a uh, long time ago planning is very important for the district and uh, uh, this year was the first time so we did uh, I, I think you did a very good job putting out a color flow chart and so on uh, but I think we have to extend that is is it's important to have a, a more generic model that uh, 
uh, can work year after year so that uh, uh, the flow chart is not only a generating ideas, setting goals and so forth, but also creating a process of collecting data, supporting the ideas and so on. Okay, And that generic model can be worked out as we go on. Um, one point probably I, before forgetting is that we probably should couple this flow chart with our school calendar. You know, as we run school from June to June, um, we should also consider this whole planning process is a continuing process. It's not just uh, two weeks put up a chart. We really have to think through from beginning, you know, summertime, uh, you know, thinking process, preparation process, put out a plan during the school, collecting data, verifying, reviewing results, and so on. And this whole process is very important. And I'm glad you can chair this committee. I wish you good luck in continuing this process. That's my first point. Second point I want to make is uh, the public, um, in our community, we have lots of volunteers, and it's very good. Like this weekend, we had the town meet, you know, this so-called town fair, you know, the Lions Club, and all these things, all done by volunteers. So we are in a very good community, and the sports activities, all kinds of, you know, football, pickleball, whatever, you know, there's a lot of things. I mentioned science uh, program, research program, because I feel that um, we need to have a little balance, okay? Um, we do have a little weakness in the community that we don't have a major uh, technology company sort of uh, residing in this community. So the research program is not as you know, strong as we probably wish you know, to become, although we do have a good program. As you can see last year, uh, we had uh, hosted the program and a lot of people participated so on, but we could better. We can do much better uh, by having more participants, more program. And summer is a key. Uh, this reminds me, this summer uh, we used to have this scientific program called Gordon Conference, you know, sponsored by the government. Uh, during the 60s, and uh, lots and lots of graduate students that go through that program, get into college, become, you know, uh, science-oriented student. It's because those kind of programs, those programs run in what, in campuses during the summer, because summer facility is free, uh, time is free, okay? It's pretty easy and a very low-cost program. Uh, we could invite a lot of people to be uh, lecturers in our community during the summer, run a couple of courses, uh, in fact, you know, can entice them to become mentor for the science program, so on. These are the things that I had in mind. I had some conversation with some people. I just want to clarify why I asked those questions. I think these kind of volunteer, partially maybe you know, supported by the district, it will pay a large dividend, okay? So these are my two points, thank you. So um, you all were talking about the building of community and and everybody contributing and, and sort of sharing. We are, com we are community members who are volunteers also, so I want to say thank you to, to you all for showing up and doing this work. I don't know if the community knows that we have executive sessions sometimes for hours before these meetings, and not yet, but I'm guessing we're probably gonna have after as well. So I, you know, I just wanna say thank you to this board who shows up and tirelessly does this work. Um, and really thank you to, to the schools and the community for letting us be learners with you, right? So this weekend, there was confusion and misunderstanding, and, and because we reached out and because we communicated, uh, we were able to, to clear up the miscommunication, so I'm grateful for the opportunity for us to be learners together. Um, and yeah, Ife, I hear you talking about how our kids can distinguish themselves if they want to move into to career or vocation and demonstrating their distinction, and so we have these incredible programs, and there's always, always room for more. Um, here, here to the programs of executive functioning and science of reading. Thank you for following the research and following 
everything that's happening in the field and seeing that there's always room for better and it's not a, a negative on us. It's just opportunity for, for better for all of our kids because we know that, that they deserve it. We all do. Um, so I just want to say thank you for that. Um, I wanted to say that Ife is going to be joining me uh, to, to talk with the, the folks in the high school as they go through their IB, uh, this, this new accreditation next, process. Next month. Uh, next month. Uh, I guess we'll probably have a meeting before that. I think we'll have a meeting that week. Um, and yes, it is uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. And for those who celebrate, I want to wish you all next week a happy, healthy new year and a sweet new year. Um, thank you, folks. Thank you. And I'll just uh, close out again, start of the school year. I want to thank, uh, underneath uh, Chris's direction, our operations team in particular. Classrooms are going well, staff effectively going. We've heard a lot about that this today with the summer work and things. But our transportation team done an outstanding job coming back online. Um, our uh, maintenance and custodial crew just done a great job of getting our schools ready and as well as our food services team and our technology team. So all those other things that are so critical helping us get the school year started, did a great job. And we know all we're dealing with supply chain <laughs> issues and things along the way. So um, they've done an amazing job making school uh, ready uh, for learning. So when the staff and faculty come back for teaching and the children are here, we're ready to do that. So I just wanted to say it was an extremely busy year. And uh, again, we as many other organizations are running a little bit shy on having a full <laughs> load of employees here to do the, some of that work. So the team has done uh, a great job getting their schools ready and open for our kids. Um, last one to say, just with you know, kind of Matt came up for again, uh, frankly excited about some of the things we anticipate coming forward with our uh, facilities in the schools. And so as we know, we're looking at updating our softball and baseball and actually bringing tennis onto the school grounds as well too. So we hope that there's opportunity there that we can expand programs such as the, you know, field hockey was recently added with SISO, so that's a great piece. But now if we can add on things like youth tennis and stuff, we'll have the facilities in the district proper that would be able to use. And it's nice having them on the campus. It's just parking is easy. Kids can be maybe doing something else at another game and there's an event down at the tennis court. So there's a, a couple of things coming around the corner. Again, we've talked before about uh, some upgrades and we'll be talking in the next month or two that we'll be coming back in May to ask the community to allow us to go after those um, kind of reserve funds that we've established last year to start hopefully working, uh, putting a shovel on the ground next July. And so but that, that should bring, again, much more connectivity and, and more sports, more sports and more opportunities to it as well too. And so who knows, we might even throw pickleball on top of this uh, tennis court, we'll see. So. Yeah. And a swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's on the third floor at the high school. And a bowling uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So thank you, board. All right, be it resolved that this regular meeting of the Board of Education be adjourned. Motion? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained?